All right, now that we know how to connect everything, let's get it disconnected. I'm going to show you the order of that too, okay? Step one, I'm going to get some hand sanitizer, okay? If you have a place where you can wash your hands, terrific. Uh, we are still connected to water. There is a sprayer in here with faucets that you can use to, to wash up a little bit too. So again, this part, the, the biggest thing we're trying to uh, point out here is sanitation is extremely important. So uh, if you follow the steps, you should have no problem. First step you're going to want to do is you're going to go over to your power pole. You're going to shut off your water source and you're going to shut off your power source. Okay? You don't want to start disconnecting things with everything still turned on. Once you're, once that is all shut off, we're going to go, since, since I've, I've just sanitized, I'm going to go do my, um, my water first. So I'm going to have my wipes ready here. Get one out. So I'm ready to go. Set it right here. We're going to come over and we're going to disconnect from our campsite first. So water off, disconnect there. The reason I like to disconnect there is in case I didn't turn the water off all the way and I disconnect here, I'm going to have water all in there. So if I disconnect from here, I know I'm shut off. So that's disconnected. I'm going to take that. We're going to come back over here and we're going to disconnect from here. So no more water. So this is going to get brought in. Take our hose here and very easily Got to coil it up. We'll bring our two ends up together, but before we connect them, got our disconnecting wipes here once again. Or disinfecting, I think it's a disconnecting. We're doing both here. We're disconnecting and disinfecting. So that's done. We'll take the two. We are going to put them back together. Nice and snug. In we go. Water's off. Electrical's even easier. Turn off your breaker at your power pole. Unplug it. You can just leave this one plugged in up here. It doesn't matter. And then it's just a matter of pulling this back through and coiling it up. Just like that. Okay? Close that up. It doesn't have to be real tight. This just has to be snug. It's just to keep debris from the rear tires kicking up into here and, and keep this area relatively clean. Okay? Now the fun part, we've got our sewer. So we are back to our protective gloves here. So on those are going to go once again. And what we're not going to do today, because as you can see, we're just in my yard, I'm not going to pull the, the tanks here. But this is the time that you would open up the tanks before you leave your campsite. Now, again, most campsites, you've, you've got your, your potable water, so you're not gonna really wanna connect that to do your bypass valve, or excuse me, to do your black, black tank flush. Uh, my recommendation, quite honestly, would be just to go to the dumping station. You know that that's what that water's for, and, and go ahead and do that there. So, if you do wanna drain whatever you've got left, just remember, black tank first, so you give that a pull, and that will go through our clear-ish or clear -ish elbow here that you'll have connected in the ground. You'll not only be able to hear it flushing through, you'll be able to see it flushing through. This one's a little more opaque than some of them, which actually is a little bit nicer uh, than really, really, really seeing it. So once that's done, that gets pushed back closed, just like it is, then you would do your gray. That would come out, and that's going to flush out and help to at least, I wouldn't call it clean this uh, hose, or certainly not sanitize it, but it helps it immensely to just get, get a lot of that flushed out of there. Okay, you confirm that both of those valves are closed nice and tight. You can go in here, and you can disconnect from your sewer line your sewer outlet I should say. The cap gets put on. 
Confirm that your cap is on both ends. You put this guy down in the middle here of our sewer hose bin and this gets just coiled on back into the box. Lastly, you've got your slinky here. That'll get wound up. This guy goes right into the little holes on the bottom. And that'll let you pick it up and carry it. Oops, I got it the wrong one. That'll let you pick it up and carry it. Put that away. Back in this corner. Let's confirm I don't have to touch anything else. Oh, I do. Look at this. We've got to put a couple of caps back on, right? We've got to put our drain cap back on. Then we've got to put our plug back in our hole down there. Again, just like the other one has. Keeps yucky stuff from coming up in here. We are secure. Our valves are closed. Our caps are on. Top goes on our bin. Bin gets put away. And that's all there is to it. Take your gloves off, find a place to dispose of them. A little more hand sanitizer, or again, if you've got a place to actually wash your hands, even better. But that's all there is to it. Now, the sewer connection always scares people. You really, I, I didn't get a, a drop of water on me. Uh, the, the gloves are there uh, to help you if there's any condensation in there. Sometimes that can be the case when you take the cap off. Watch for that. But it, it's, it's really not a terrible process. And those are the steps for doing it. So thanks again for watching. You've done all the outside videos. You've seen that. You know where everything goes. So assuming the outside's packed away, the first thing you're going to have to do take an entire walk around the vehicle to make sure all of the doors are closed, okay? That is extremely important. The second step is to make sure that the stairs retract. You do that with the same switch I showed you in the other video where you turn them on. So it says entry step. Flip that down and the steps will retract. You probably won't be able to hear it on the video, but they'll do it. Okay, I just heard them come in. So I know that those are out, because if those stay out and you start driving, it's very easy to have them tear off. So, let's talk a little bit about our order of operations here and what we want to do. So, we've got jacks down, we've got three slides out, we've been living in this thing, so we have stuff in the way. So, the important thing to do is to start shutting systems down. Right now I've got the air conditioning on because it's a real hot August day here, and my uh, beautiful wife and I are going to roast if we try to do these videos without it. So I'm going to leave it on. Typically, you would just switch this to off, okay? We are hooked to our electric right now because I've got things operating, so typically this screen should be blank, okay? When that is off, that means we're disconnected from electrical. See where it says 17? That's how many amps I'm pulling right now. Those would typically be off. Your water pump is switched to off. You can check your tank levels and make sure that everything's empty. If you can see those lights there, black, gray, fresh, and LPG, that stands for LP gas. So my black tank does have a little bit in it still, but my gray, my fresh, and my uh, liquid propane are empty, uh, so I'll need to get that refilled. So we're going to, first and foremost, notice this large warning sign here, and there's another caution one here. Moving slides, it's very, very, very important to make sure that things are out of the way. When things are in the way, that's when things get crushed, that's when slides get damaged, that's when motors get damaged, that's when furniture gets damaged, and we need to avoid all of that. So these slides, you'll see, come in pretty far. It'll tighten up pretty quickly on us. So the first thing I'm going to do is follow my warning sign that I had in there. If, if, if my, uh, we can get a shot of this. Take a look at this straight on. You will see this is where the slide comes in. If it hits this chair, those motors are very powerful, it can break this driver's seat. So, we're going to this electric seat, button on the side, we're just going to slide that all the way forward, and we're going to tip the back up. 
This way, I've got plenty of clearance there, okay? Working our way back. Our rug will get in the way. We don't want to get that caught, so we're just going to move it aside. Pillows and those sorts of things are fine. Nobody is to sit in any of these chairs while you're sliding in. The only person in the vehicle while you're operating slides should be the person operating the slides. Everybody else should be outside of the vehicle, okay? The other thing we're going to probably want to do prior to even doing the slides while we've got some room in here, is we're going to want to start putting some stuff away. So we've got our cabinets, our coffee maker is going to want to get stowed away, coffee, air freshener, and then our drawers. So these cabinets have pretty solid locks on them. They'll stay shut for you while you're driving in, in, in exceptional cases. It, it could open, but as a general rule, they will stay shut. The drawers, on the other hand, they do tend to slide open. They've got some hooks right in here that hook tight. So these, when you're camping, you just leave them kind of open a little bit. But before you take off, you got to shut them all away. So they've got their driving feature enabled. Okay, these, both these slides are going to come in, so we're going to have to move these out of the way, okay, as those slides come in. The other thing you're going to want to definitely make sure of is in the bedroom. If any of these drawers are open, when this bed comes in, it's going to come this way and it's going to press right up against these drawers. So we want to make sure all of them are closed and latched and ready to go, okay? Let's walk back out toward the front. It looks like we have everything that we need kind of stowed away. Everything's out of the way. Everything's good to go. We've got to make sure that we've got things latched. We, we, we are going to be able to get back to this stuff as we go through this process, but, but as you're walking through, it's a good idea. Make sure your shower door is latched so it doesn't fly open while you're driving. Check your medicine cabinet. Your bedroom door needs to be shut while you're driving, but we've got to get back there again, so we're going to just leave that for now. This door is latched, and then you've got your pocket door here, which opens and closes. But this, can you get that in the shot? This has a little spring on here, okay? So this goes into that latch, and then you pull that spring on there, and it can't come undone. So that'll stay open for you, okay? Refrigerator. Make sure those are latched and shut, and they are. So we're looking pretty good as far as things latched and, 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 and put down. So let's get to moving some of the slides, okay? I'm going to start with the big guy here, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and operate it from the system up here. Noticing my warning sign again, but we did move the driver's seat, so we're in good shape there. We do not want to forget that. And then uh, if you would like, so here is the room slide up. This is the big one. So this is in, out. Oh, obviously, we want to move it in, so we're going to use the in button. What's going to happen is I'm going to have Noel stand near the stairs to watch it because the slide operates kind of interestingly. It actually lifts up and goes toward the ceiling and comes in on an angle and it can look a little strange when it's coming in. So I want you to see that on the video so that you realize that that's normal operation. So if we want to turn it around, let's go ahead and start the vehicle and pull this slide in. The RV does need to be running in order for the slides to operate. So we're going to start her up. get some beeping done here and we'll pull this right in so watch how it comes in toward the ceiling here as I start pulling this slide in here we go so it tilts upward it gets real close to the ceiling but you just kind of let it slide in and you'll see it flatten out and when it gets to the end, you want to immediately release the button. So you'll hear it. You'll see it covers about two-thirds of that bigger TV in the back. Still watching, nothing in the way. And it stopped. That's it. Release the button, and there you go. So now that big slide's in. Now we're going to pull the kitchen slide in, and you'll see how it narrows. This will look the way it did when you picked it up. So that slide button is right up here. It is under slide room two. 
we don't know what slide room one is. It doesn't do anything and it never has. So we've got slide room two. So that one's going to go in as well. We are once again double checking. Everything is out of the way and in it goes. Again, just listening for it, making sure you don't hear any crunching or other issues. Once it stops, release the button. Slide one and slide two are in, so we can go make our way back to the bedroom and get that one closed up. checking everything. All my drawers are shut. I know I already checked it, but you can't be too careful with these. You can really ruin some things. Okay, so here is the slide control for the bedroom. Once again, most important, making sure everything's out of the way, including my camera person who's going to walk back out of the room so I can pull this in. Okay, here we go. Sorry you can't see a whole lot here, but it does tuck right in. The bed tucks right up against the dresser drawers. And again, you hear it stop. That's all there is to it. That brings all three, three slides, excuse me, in. That latches down most of our things. The last step walking out of here is to shut that bedroom door. You do a final little cabinet check. At this point, too, if you've got anything that, that you think, well, might need to be secured in the drawers or in the cabinets or on the countertops, now's the time to deal with that, uh, including the stuff on this table. We've um, This does have some little rubber feet on it and can kind of stay where it goes, but even if you just sit it on a, on a cushion or, or that sort of thing, um, these are our self pepper shakers. It's, it's, it's a campfire in a tent. I mean, come on. How cool is that? Those are going to need to go in a cabinet, but again, we're not actually taking off right now. We're showing you how it works. So, slides in, doors latched, windows up. Let's go ahead and pull the jacks up. Okay, also while we're in the process of shutting down all the systems, you're going to want to shut off the water heater. So it's turned on right now on electric. It can also run on propane. In our case, we're running it on electric, so we're going to switch that to off. Both of those should be off, okay? So now your water heater's off. And you're going to want to turn off your refrigerator. Now, if you have a long ride, you could have it run on gas, but after you're unplugged, it's not going to run on AC anymore. So that's the on-off button, okay? So we're going to want to do that. All right, here we are in the driver's seat. We're going to go ahead and pull the jacks up. So you should know from when you put them down, there's where the controller is. Operator, only person on board when operating the jack leveling system. It's far more important when you're actually putting the jacks down, but it's still a good idea to just have the operator, the only person in the vehicle, uh, when, you're, when you're doing all this stuff. It helps you not to lose concentration. So anyway, go ahead and you turn the system on. You'll see the wait button come on. There's a light there. It's blinking. I'm telling you to wait. In a couple of seconds here, that's going to go away. Okay, so now it's telling us the jacks are down, which we know. So, we want to pick them up. Retract all jacks. Give that button a press. Now, you probably, again, can't hear this on the video, but it is retracting the jacks. You can hear it. And also, this wait light is one again on, blinking rather, telling us that they're still in the process of getting pulled up here. I can still hear them operating a little bit. Okay, all of our lights just went off. The jacks are now up. So all you have to do, turn the system back off. And then the last step now is we can go ahead and turn the vehicle off is fine. The last thing we need to do is walk around the outside, pick up all of our boards, put those away on the driver's side of the vehicle with the rest of them, double check that all your doors are once again closed, and we're ready to take off. Thanks for watching.